Good morning and Merry Christmas from the Beards. Uh, thanks guys for all your prayers. We were able to successfully move to Wichita. Uh, we miss you guys so much, but uh, with this virtual uh, service, we're, we're happy to join you. Uh, please sing a few songs with us and uh, as we just worship uh, the Lord in our Christmas time and just uh, as we worship in the Word with a message from Pastor Cam. Love you guys. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, hope you had an incredible Christmas. Um, Christmas is a big thing with our family, and we've just uh, had a great time enjoying one another and the birth of Jesus Christ, a miracle uh, that has brought redemption into our life, a miracle. Um, we've seen miracles. I've watched miracles be born, um, welcoming in my three children. Um, I've seen miracles in ministry where uh, people have been snared from the depths of potential death. I've watched miracles in sports. I remember in 1980, when I was just a wee kid, watching the USA beat the Soviet Union in hockey. We were all, you know, Detroit's a huge hockey town. We were all gathered around this TV at this kid's house in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. And um, 
We watched the USA beat the Soviets. We were going nuts. A, a miracle, man, just a miracle. You know, as I uh, read about the birth of Christ, um, his genealogy uh, mentions mentions four women uh, in the downline of his ancestry. Ancestry.com would figure out who these ladies are. Now, I want to tell you this. You're going to start reading through the Bible here in January like most folk do. Um it is very, very rare for you to find a woman mentioned in the genealogies of Scripture. God's not biased. He loves women folk just like he loves the men folk. Uh, but it's just a rarity. It's, you know, Josiah begat Eli and Eli you know, begat Solomon, and Solomon begat Rehoboam. It just lays out the dudes that starts families. In Christ's genealogy in Matthew chapter 1, um, it mentions four women in his genealogy. And uh, it, it's just a rarity. But I want to take a look at these four women and what they were like uh, in the line of Christ, in the line of the miracle that was born for the redemptive story. So let's read together in Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. Now, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So now I'm reading you the uh, downline of all the folk that are in the genealogy of Jesus, the son of David and of Abraham, which would be two biggies in the Jewish culture, right? It's the culture. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judah, his brothers, and Judah begat Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begat Hazan. Hezron begat Ram. Ram begat Amadabed. Amadabed begat Nashon. Nashon begat Solomon. Solomon begat Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begat Obadad by Ruth. And Obadad begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David, the king. David, the king, begat Solomon and by her who had the wife of Uriah. Solomon begat Rehoboam. Rehoboam begat Abijah. Abijah begat Asa. Asa begat Josephat. Josephat begat Jerem. Jerem begat Uzziah. Uzziah begat Jotham. Jotham begat Isaiah. Isaiah begat Hezekiah. Hezekiah begat Manasseh. Manasseh begat Amon. Amon begat Josiah. Josiah begat Jacob and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. It's good reading. Always throws a pastor off with the names, but good reading right there. I'm, I'm sure that you are really uh, refreshed. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jokinah begat Sheatel, and Sheatel begat Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begat Abadad, Abadad begot Elkim, Elkim begot Azor, Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot 
Achim. Achim begat Elhud. Elhud begat Eleazar. Eleazar begat Matthian. Matthian begat Jacob. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was Jesus born. And all the generations of Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until uh, the Christ, the Christ, I love it, are 14 generations. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ were, is as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, before they knew each other, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in dreams saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she will bring forth a son. You will call his name Jesus for he will save his people from his sins. Amen. So all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and his name shall be Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. So that is the genealogy of Jesus. You have one generation after another generation after another generation, all the way down to Joseph and Mary. She was conceived by the Holy Ghost. Joseph, an upright man, said, listen, I'm going to put you away. I'm, I'm not totally sure, you know, what's, what's going on. So let's hide you till you have this child. Angel shows and says, it's cool, dude. She was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the Immaculate Conception. And the child's name is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. But in this genealogy of Jesus, there are four ladies that are mentioned. Four, Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. And like I said, Previously, it's, it's an exception to the case that women would be mentioned in a genealogy. So let me cover the four women, the four outcast women, in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. The first is Tamar. Tamar is a story or a tale, a sordid tale of incest and prostitution. If we read in Genesis chapter 38, 13 through 19, it, it tells us the story of Tamar. So the, the Bible says, it, and, and it was told Tamar saying, look, your, your, your father-in-law is coming. He's coming to Timnah to shear the sheep. So she took off her widow's garment. She covered herself with a veil. She wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah. 
For she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given to him as a wife. So when Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot because she had covered her face. Then he turned to her by the way and said, please let me come to you. For, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. So she said, what, what, what will you give me that you may come to me? And he said, I, I will send you a young goat from the flocks. So she said, w will you give me a pledge that you'll send me? And then, then, then he said, well, what, what pledge would you like for me to give you? So she said, your signet and a cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave them to her and went into her and she conceived by him. So she arose, went away, laid aside her veil, put off the garments of her widowhood. She was married to Judah. Uh, she was married to one of Judah's sons who had died. As a matter of fact, his name was Ur, and the Bible says of Ur that one day, because he was evil, God struck him dead. She didn't have children. So Judah said, hey man, I'll promise you one of the boys, and that didn't happen. So frustrated by being childless, unwilling to wait on God's timing, she dresses up like a prostitute. And as one of the leaders of God, and you see it occasionally, unfortunately, by God's grace, many of my colleagues have remained pure, I as well, God's grace. He sees a prostitute on the way. That, that's crazy in itself to me. And the desire is so much, he says to her, dang man, what, what, what would you like? I'll take the signet, I'll take the staff, I'll take the cord, I'll take, I'll, yeah, I'll take it all, man. I, because when we're done with all of this, buddy boy, I, I'm, I got you, man. I, I do. The, maybe this is the law of the first mention of being blackmailed. Judah has no clue it's his former daughter. Judah has no clue who he's fornicating with is his son's widow. Judah has no clue. She, she bears twins to Judah. Conceived through this prostitution scheme to him. Perez, the firstborn, is one of the men folk that carry out the messianic line. Don't, don't trouble yourself or worry about finding any redeeming virtues about Tamar because they are not mentioned in scripture. So the first woman in the genealogy of Christ, of Jesus, is Tamar. One who dressed the role of a prostitute and through cunningness deceived her father-in-law to having sex with her 
bore twins, and one of those twins is in the direct ancestry.com of the Messiah. That's nuts to me, man. Skeletons in the closet, whatever you want. That's just crazy, Tamar, first one. Second one is Rahab. You're probably a little bit more familiar with Rahab. Her name means savagery. Rahab is what the scripture calls a harlot. She uh, was a Canaanite, which is a mortal enemy of God. And Moses sent a couple of boys out to check things out, Joshua and Caleb. And when they come to Jericho, they're kind of sniffed out, man. Somebody's doing a little military recon and I think they sniff out where Joshua and Caleb are. And so they go to Rahab's house, knock on the door, and they cut a deal with her for her to protect them. The Bible says in, uh, in Joshua chapter 2, and uh, one through seven. Now, Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men. I said Moses, Joshua, in, in Achaia Grove to spy secretly saying, go to the land, especially Jericho. So, so they went out and they came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told that the king of Jericho saying, behold, the men had come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab saying, bring out the men who have come to you that have entered into the house for they have come to search out our country. Then the woman took the two men and she said to them, yes, the men came to me but I don't know where they're from. And it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark, that the men went out. And when the men went out, I do not know when they left. Pursue them quickly for you'll overtake them. But she had brought them up to the house, to the roof, and it hidden them in the stalks of flax, which she had laid under the roof. And then the men pursued them by the road to Jordan, to the fords. And as soon as those who had pursued them had gone out and shut the gate. Now, before they lay down, she came to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all of the inhabitants of the land are faint hearted because of you. So I read a couple of other verses. Check this out, y'all. She renounces the God of the Canaanites. She becomes a convert to the Lord Jehovah. And She's savvy, man. She's been around the block, man. She knows how to wheel and deal. She knows how to hustle being a harlot. She deceived the folk that were coming to find these spies. And she, she cuts a deal with these guys. And she says to them in verse number 14, uh, she says, 
listen, man, I gotta, I gotta know that this is legit. And so the men answered her, our lives for yours. If none of you tell this business of ours, it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. I love that verse, man. Our lives for yours. Tamar, a hustler and a schemer and dresses up as a prostitute to trick a dude that played the name of God to a straight out harlot named Rahab. The second a woman in the genealogy of Jesus, Rahab. She was the great, great grandmother of David. So there's a, a, a little thread playing out that this line of the messianic redemptive story has some, some cracks in it, some brokenness in it, some sordid sinning involved. You know, if you can take inventory of your life just for a second, and you can go back in the day before salvation and then your salvation, your life after Christ. I bet you there's some crackness. I bet you there's some brokenness. I bet you there's some things that don't match up with what the Bible would want for somebody to be godly or devoted to him. It's okay. In the genealogies of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter one, God is communicating to us it's okay, man. We're all broke. We're all cracked. We've all done stupid things. But God can use that in a miracle way. God can use that in a way that you can say, yeah, Emmanuel, that's my king. Yeah, Emmanuel, that's my Lord. Yeah, Emmanuel, that's who I serve. Yeah, Emmanuel, that's who I'm devoted with. And God says, that's cool. I'll be with you. The greatest part of the, the, the great commission. And lo, I will go with you always. The third outcast woman that's talked about in Matthew chapter one is Ruth. She's right in the messianic line. Ruth was a Gentile, a Moabite. Um, the entire Moabite race has its roots in incest. One incestual relationship after another. Their pure existence was repugnant to the Jewish people and the Jewish culture. And there's Ruth, a Gentile, grafted into the messianic line that rolls to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is a Moabite. The Bible talks about the Moabites in De uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse three. An Amorite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even, let me tell you how bad. 
Let me, let me just drive the point home. Even to the 10th generation. Shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever? So in the Jewish culture, Moabites were despicable. Nothing to do with them, no dealings, uh, business, anything, nothing. In the line of Jesus, Tamar, Schemer, Rahab, Harlot, Ruth, Moabite, Messianic line. The fourth is Bathsheba. The, the Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, it happened in the spring of the year. At the time when kings go to battle. That David sent Joab his servants with him in all of Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon. The siege river. But David remained in Jerusalem. Then it happened, then it happened one evening. David arose from his bed and he walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired of the woman and someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? She got a husband. You're right, he's gone to battle, man. He's working it, king. Man, he's a good dude. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, it's Bathsheba. And then, then David sent mes, uh, messengers and, and took her, and, and, and she came to him, and she lay with, with her, and she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived so she sent and told David, I'm with child, David. So the deal is Deuteronomy says when a king builds his house, he needs to build bulwarks around it. It's exactly what the Bible says. And what is that is to do is you can let the sun in and you can have the water soak all day long so it's warm when you take your bath at night. But these, there's these protected devices so an archer couldn't nail the king. Now, for some reason, when David constructed um, where he was staying, he didn't, he didn't do that. I have no clue why. Was it premeditated? I got no clue. So he sees there's a lot of stopping points to turn, repent, and get out, man. Get, get out. Like Joseph, I don't even like that coat anyway. Giddy up, you turn. But David lets the, the, the urge to be with this beautiful woman that he's watching bay. So he sends his servants to get her. Sure enough, man, go get her. She's, I'm the king, dude. I'm entitled. Servants have got to go obey and they bring her. Those guys lay together and she conceives a child. The child doesn't, doesn't live. Um, David writes about this time in his life in Psalms 51 and Psalms 27. And the child dies. David comments that he knows that the child is with the Lord. Well, after a bunch of other crazy things and David having... Bathsheba's, Bathsheba's husband murdered. 
they, they have another child. A child is Solomon, the wisest man that's ever lived according to scripture. Right in the line of Jesus is Solomon. Bathsheba, mentioned in Matthew chapter one. In the Messianic line are two harlots, one Moabite, an adulterous woman. That's your four. That's the four women that are mentioned in the entire genealogy of Jesus Christ. Jesus' family tree, if you may, the royal genealogy was filled with sinners. Here's the point. The people in the messianic genealogy are not on display. What's on display is the grace of God. I, 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 I hope, I, I think Luke 7.34 says it the best, that I get it, that Jesus was a friend of sinners. I, 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 yeah, I, I would understand it, especially walking through Matthew chapter one. It doesn't matter where you've been. You and your past and all the crud that you've done is not on display. <laughs> What's on display is the grace of God. And I'm thankful during this miracle season that I am in the direct line of the messianic redemptive story. Let the grace of God consume you.